Ibiki Sakura and Ayaka Wera walk home from Koya Women's Academy, and on their way, Ayaka observes that Hibiki has put on weight. She recommends that Hibiki consider going on a diet. About a week later, Hibiki visits the Silverman Gym. While there, she spots Akimi Sorian, a fellow schoolmate, who also expresses interest in joining. Looking into one of the training rooms, they see that all the members are muscular, which immediately convinces Akimi to sign up. Naruzo Machio, one of the trainers, introduces himself to Hibiki, prompting her to join as well. On the following day, Machio instructs them to attempt the bench press. As Hibiki struggles, Machio provides words of encouragement. Unexpectedly, he strikes a pose, revealing his own muscular physique. Back at school, Hibiki feels sore from her gym session, and Ayaka notices that Hibiki is still putting on weight despite her efforts. In another training session, Machio guides Hibiki through squats. Afterward, Akimi notices Hibiki's appetite and her tendency to eat heartily. Hibiki discloses her daily food intake, which leaves Akimi impressed. Akimi expresses her desire for both of them to grow strong and muscular together. At the fitness center, Hibiki steps on the scale and realizes that she has indeed put on more weight. Seeking advice from Machio on weight loss, Hibiki gets a recommendation from Akimi to try the lat pull-down machine. Following this, they head to the gym's bar, where Akimi offers Hibiki additional protein. The following day, Akimi successfully persuades Hibiki to head to the swimming pool for a workout. Later, at Ayaka's residence, Hibiki and Ayaka are engrossed in a movie. Just as they're prepared to indulge in more films, Ayaka's sister, Nana, interrupts with a request for assistance, involving Hibiki as well. To Hibiki's astonishment, she discovers that Ayaka's family is the proprietor of a boxing gym named the Glory Gym. Nana discloses that their father taught them the art of boxing. When Ayaka takes a breather, Hibiki observes Ayaka's physique and inquires about her fitness routine. Ayaka shares insights into some of her exercise routines. Afterward, Nana proposes that Hibiki should attempt using the punching bag, resulting in the bag breaking as she strikes it. Satomi Tachibana and Rumika Aina, both educators at Koyo Women's Academy, find themselves in a situation where Satomi believes she has put on weight. Rumika hands her a pamphlet promoting the Silverman Gym as a potential solution. Upon arriving at the gym, Satomi realizes that both Hibiki and Akimi are present, there as well. Machio introduces himself to Satomi and directs her to engage with dumbbells during her workout routine. Amidst the training session, Satomi becomes quite apprehensive when Akimi points out a tan on her abdomen. It's subsequently disclosed that Satomi is, in fact, a renowned cosplayer. During a school lunch break, Hibiki, Akimi, and Ayaka share a meal. During this conversation, Ayaka learns that both Hibiki and Akimi are utilizing the same gym for their workouts. Their discussion also touches upon their packed lunches, leading Akimi to persuade Hibiki to consider a specific dietary approach. At an event, Satomi participates in cosplay until she notices Hibiki and Akimi. Ironically, the two of them are engrossed in observing Machio, who is also cosplaying at the event. Consequently, the photographer's attention becomes fixated on Machio instead. Later that evening, Satomi, at her residence, continues to wonder about the character Machio was portraying in his cosplay and remains perplexed by his moniker, the Muscle King. Upon Hibiki's arrival at the Silverman Gym, she becomes aware that Akemi's attention is fixed on the training room. Machio proceeds to clarify that during peak hours, both regular and new members engage in workouts. He then guides Hibiki and Akimi to attempt the chest press exercise. As prime time concludes, Ayaka unexpectedly makes an appearance, disclosing that the Glory Gym is accepting fresh members, and she's been approached by the Silverman Gym to provide boxing instruction. The subsequent day, when the trio plans their workout, Akimi proposes utilizing her residence. Once they reach Akemi's expansive house, she sets off to locate a training manual. Ayaka expresses interest in attempting an exercise from the manual involving chairs. Following this, Hibiki endeavors to execute an advanced rendition of the exercise inadvertently causing the chairs to break. This mishap prompts Hibiki to offer her apologies to Akimi. For the duration of the summer break, the girls opt to spend time at the beach. Regrettably, they encounter a sign prohibiting swimming due to shark presence. 
In light of this, Akimi suggests the burpee exercise as an alternative. Ayaka then chimes in with the idea of engaging in a sprinting session. While at school, Rumika tasks the class with selecting an event for the upcoming sports day. The class collectively opts for the 400-meter relay. Transitioning to the gym, Machio proposes that the girls concentrate on training their hamstrings through leg curls. The subsequent day, as the girls walk to school, Hibiki voices her discomfort due to muscle, soreness resulting from the exercise routine. As sports day culminates, the relay emerges as the final event, with Hibiki and Akimi positioned as anchors for their respective classes. While awaiting her turn, Hibiki recalls Michaud's guidance on attempting the bicycle crunch. When her moment finally arrives, her teammate fumbles the baton, leading Hibiki to retrieve it and persevere through the relay. Ultimately, she clinches second place, trailing behind Akimi. However, her triumph is short-lived as Satomi informs her that their class has been disqualified due to her unauthorized baton retrieval. Back at the gym in celebration of the Silverman Gym's half-year anniversary, Machio rewards the girls with raffle tickets. Subsequently, they proceed to the gym sauna. Amid the relaxation, Hibiki proposes a competition to ascertain who can endure the sauna's heat the longest, a challenge she emerges victorious from. As a result, she is awarded t-shirts from the raffle. While en route to the Silverman Gym, Hibiki encounters a sale advertisement for a home theater system. Upon reaching the gym, the girls notice a flyer publicizing an arm wrestling tournament. E. Bicky directs a question about the tournament to Machio, who proceeds to outline the arm wrestling regulations. In the initial match, E. Bicky effortlessly triumphs over Ayaka. However, in the subsequent round, Machio secures victory by leveraging his immense strength to overpower He. Bicky. When the tournament day arrives, He. Bicky learns that only two participants are competing in the women's category, herself and a Russian contender named Gina Boyd. The contest concludes with Hei Biki securing a decisive win over Gina. A few days down the line, Gina transfers to Hei Biki's school. When questioned about her training regimen, Gina unveils her primary focus on sambo classes, arm wrestling, and kipping exercises. Following school, Gina informs Akimi of her unavailability at the gym due to a meeting with her host family. Subsequently, on that same night, Hei Biki stumbles upon the realization that Gina is staying at her place. During school, Gina discloses that she used to watch anime and Jackie Chan films as a way to learn Japanese and immerse herself in the culture. Exiting school, Gina is taken aback to discover that the gym is closed for the day. Hibiki then extends an invitation to her job for Gina, Akimi, and Ayaka. Upon reaching the destination, it's revealed that Hibiki works at her brother's Yakiniku restaurant. Once her break concludes, Hibiki expresses her concerns about gym and food expenses. Akimi suggests that Hibiki can have her gym expenses covered by the school due to her sister being the chairman. The following day, Satomi, the class instructor, is in the middle of a lesson when Gina recognizes her as the renowned cosplayer, Yuri Riko. Later that day, Gina and Satomi spend time together and Gina proposes the idea of jogging to Akihabara. When questioned by Satomi about the purpose, Gina unveils her aspiration to establish an idol group. At an idol audition, the director Kutaro Deer complains until the girls arrive. Despite managing to captivate the audience, including an impressive moment where Satomi performs a deadlift, they ultimately fail to make the final cut. Upon Satomi's departure from the teacher's lounge, Rumika and Yakosha become curious about her recent busy schedule, a curiosity heightened when Rumika spots her Silverman gym card. Their intrigue leads them to the gym, where both encounter Satomi and their students. Machio introduces himself and directs everyone to attempt the side bend exercise. Following this, Rumika and Yakosha head home. Moving into November, during a field trip, the second year students find themselves hiking up a mountain. In the course of the hike, Yakosha imparts wisdom about proper hiking technique and exercise. However, Hibiki, Satomi, and Rumika lag behind causing them to lose track of the group and choose the wrong trail, inducing panic. After regaining their composure, Satomi spots a tree and provides instructions for tree and rope climbing. As they ascend the tree, Yakosha realizes that they've wandered into the athletic corner of the mountain. Meanwhile, an unidentified man instructs his assistant to arrange a trip to Japan. 
Upon arriving in Japan, the enigmatic man notifies his secretary of his departure. Meanwhile, over at the Silverman gym, Machio instructs the girls to attempt back extensions. Just at that moment, the mysterious individual enters, unveiled as the renowned movie star Harnold Doji and Schoeninger. When questioned about their connection, Machio discloses that Harnold had been his mentor during his studies in America. Harnold informs Machio that he recently discovered his whereabouts. Following Michaud's impressive hand grip demonstration, Harnold extends an invitation to a bodybuilding competition. On the subsequent day, the girls show up at the bodybuilding event, where Harnold escorts them to the VIP area and elucidates the competition's regulations. When Machio takes the stage, his pose exudes such power that it compels other competitors to acknowledge defeat. Extending his congratulations for Michaud's triumph, Harnold unveils that the competition was a trial and urges Machio to challenge him in a competition in Las Vegas. However, Machio expresses uncertainty due to his job commitments. Back at the gym, Harnold's secretary, Jason S. Gatham, introduces himself to everyone and reveals his stay in Japan. During the Christmas season, the girls are spending time together, but their spirits wane as they realize they lack boyfriends. At the gym, Machio and Satomi make efforts to uplift their mood, but with no success. In response, Machio announces a Christmas party set to take place at the gym. Amid their training session, he directs them to attempt skull crushers. At the festive gathering, the girls revel in the moment until Machio reveals a raffle contest prize, two tickets to Tachiji Destinolent. As Machio strikes a pose, Akimi clarifies that it's a form of training. Eventually, it's unveiled that Satomi has won the tickets. Yet, due to her busy schedule, she can't attend and offers the tickets to Akimi. In response to inquiries, Akimi discloses that she's going with Machio. During their visit to Tachiji Destinoland, the girls tag along with Akimi and Machio. Upon reaching them, Akimi and Machio disclose their intention to participate in a cosplay event and Machio takes a moment to discuss the incline bench press. Meanwhile, a separated Satomi coincidentally encounters Rumika, both caught off guard by each other's cosplay attire. During New Year's Eve, he, Biki, and Gina find themselves at home, joined by the arrival of Akimi and Ayaka. Simultaneously, Satomi and Rumika are engaged in a drinking gathering at Satomi's residence. While wandering around, the girls collectively decide to make their way to a shrine. Upon reaching the shrine, Akimi unveils that it is a place of worship for the muscle god. Subsequently, Ayaka elucidates the technique of stair climbing. Reaching the summit, they discover that the shrine belongs to Michaud's family and that he takes on the role of a priest during the holidays. The subsequent day finds the girls spending time together. Upon arriving at a park to engage in street workouts, Akimi references her training manual, leading them to opt for an isometrics workout. Later on, Gina suggests their participation in a concealed talent showcase. At the event, Kutaro expresses dissatisfaction upon the girl's arrival. Satomi executes a wrestler's bridge while Ayaka sits atop her. To Kutaro's astonishment, he learns that the girl's performance garnered remarkable ratings for the talent show. As Kutaro is on his way out, he crosses paths with Jason, who hands him a flyer promoting a trip organized by the Silverman Gym. Within the premises of the Silverman Gym, Machio informs Hibiki and Akimi about an upcoming spring break trip to Nikonishima organized by the gym. He goes on to share that, with the exception of Jason, everyone will be partaking in the journey. Meanwhile, it comes to light that both Jason and Kutaro are keeping the gym under surveillance. Upon reaching Nikonishima, the group immerses themselves in the experience. Machio enters the scene with a melon, leading to the decision to have a melon bash while he elucidates the shrug exercise. Subsequently, the girls participate in the Miss Nikonishima competition. Akimi impresses with her handstand push-ups, during which Machio seizes the moment to explain push-ups. When he, Biki, takes her turn, she showcases her formidable punching strength. Upon tying for first place, they engage in a bench press showdown with Akimi emerging victorious. Later, it's revealed that Jason and Kutaro find themselves stranded at sea. On the beach, Hibiki and Akimi engage in a conversation about the positive impact of their training on their growth. Suddenly, their attention is captured by an approaching presence. Arnold arrives, announcing his role in rescuing Jason and Kutaro. Following this, 
he Bicky weighs herself, departing with a joyful demeanor upon witnessing the results. I hope you liked the recap, if so, don't forget to subscribe and like it.